Hi, Liam Elliott from SSW, and I'm at NDC Sydney. And with me today, I've got Scott Hunter, Director of Program Management at Microsoft. And he's going to tell us all about the new fancy new toys in .NET Core 3. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of stuff in .NET Core 3 that we could talk to talk about today, but let's yeah. let's just pick a couple of them. <laughs> um, at a high level, I think there's uh, uh, things I like, I like to think about is we hear the term microservice all the time. Yep. And people have asked us, what's the prescriptive way of building a microservice with .NET Core? Mm -hmm. Um, and so we have a new worker service uh, template that we have in Visual Studio uh, for building services. Okay. Um, and it can do a couple of things. It, uh, it Services aren't that complicated, meaning that they're typically a, a background process that runs and does something, whether it's listen to a queue, uh, call an API, and take an action on that API. Uh, but what's new about this template is you get all the ASP.NET things. You get the configuration system, you get the logging system, you get the dependency injection, yeah. all the things you're kind of used to in the .NET Core world. Um, and we give, the, we give you the ability to take these, these uh, services and you can run them on uh, Windows as a Windows service, mm -hmm. you can run them on Linux as a, Linux. As a, as yep. a daemon okay. um, uh, using systemd. So that's kind of cool. Mm. That's, a, that's a piece of the new tech. Um, once you have these services, how do you talk to them? We, we now support gRPC. Um, and it, it kind of reminds me of WCF because it's contract based, which yep. means you kind of give it a, here's the types that I want to use and here's the methods that I want to use. You define those things and then it builds the code for you. Um, where it's different though is it's cross-platform. You can build your gRPC service in ASP.NET mm -hmm. Core and then call it from Java and you can go the other way around as well. You could actually have a Java or a Node.js gRPC service and then call it from .NET. And so I like to think of it as modern messaging uh, that's binary, strongly typed, fast. Yep. Um, and streaming have, in there too. Streaming's in there as well. Yep. Um, and then we have um, Blazor, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been lots of excitement the last yeah. couple of years about Blazor. And the idea there is almost all the web apps we see today are spas. Uh, you know, they don't, they look like a more of a desktop app. Yep. You know, you click and things happen, the whole screen doesn't redraw. Uh, we we enabled you with Blazor to build these types of spy applications in .NET without using any JavaScript. Yeah. Maybe we should just jump straight into some demos. Yeah, let's let's yeah. let's show a couple things. So to start with, I've got this app, and this is a a, a weather service mm -hmm. that we built. It's a microservice, and uh, it all came to be. We're trying to go figure out a great microservice to use for a demo, and everybody knows what weather is. Yep. So let's do weather, um, and so let's take a look at the app. Um, the app's kind of interesting. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go into this worker folder, and it's got that new worker I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to notice that a worker is basically just a, a, a class that derives from background service. Um, and then as part of that, you're going to have uh, kind of a constructor. Uh, and you're going to notice, once again, as I said, there's your logger, there's your configuration, there's your all, all the things you expect the in the .NET Core injection. world are already there. They're being uh, injected into this thing. Um, and in my particular case, what we're going to do here is we are, um, you're going to notice this thing loops until it's told to stop. Mm -hmm. And all it does is goes out and uh, creates a client factory to get an HP client. Um, then it's going to use that client to call into a weather API. Uh, now, most of these weather APIs, they're rate limited, mm -hmm. which means you can't call them a million times. Yeah. And so what we do is we call it, we get the type back, we stick that into the cache, um, and then we look at the expire header, which tells us when to call again. Okay. And so the idea here is this thing is running in the background. It's getting the data for the weather. And now I can have a million clients call this service and I won't wipe out the, uh, the API yeah. there. So if you go look how this works in my startup CS, um, if we go down here and look, you're going to see all I do is in services, I call add hosted service weather worker. That registers that background task, mm -hmm. starts it up, it's good to go. It'll run until we are sent a message telling us to stop. Um, so that's the new way of building services yep. uh, in .NET Core. Now, once I've got that service, how do you call it? Mm. How, you know, how, how do you get into it? And so we're gonna use that new gRPC to, to, to do this. And so what I'm gonna do now is go look, uh, and my app has this proto file and you can't define your service in C-sharp because that would be weird if you're going to call it from JavaScript yep. or, or, or Java or whatever the other language is. 
Um, and so you ha there's kind of its, its own proto format for building this, but you can see this has got um, a weather stream, which returns a, a long running stream. It's got get weather, which returns a single weather response. And then we define the weather response uh, to be string, text, integer. I mean, this, this is common, common yeah. programming kind of stuff. So once we have that, um, I can right click in my, in my application and utilize the tooling we have in Visual Studio. So I can go, I want to add a service reference. And in this particular case, I've already done this. Mm -hmm. And you're going to notice that there's a weather service and it's a, it's a code generation is set to server. So that means we're going to build the server code for you. And then all you have to do is override the methods uh, that you need to implement. That's pretty handy. It's pretty handy. So let's go look inside of our services. And inside of here, I've got weather service. Now that code generation, what it actually generated was this weather.weather base. And if I F12 into that, you're going to see a bunch of ugly looking code here that you don't really care about. Uh, the important thing here is all we have to do is override those two methods you saw mm -hmm. in the proto file. So here's the override for get weather, uh, given a request, it returns back the response. And there's this weather stream. And this is one of the new features of gRPC, which is if you're doing rest, rest calls, you can call them. In gRPC, we, we support actually being able to keep a stream open and keep pushing data into it. So you look here, we go get the cached weather. We then write it down uh, out the pipe. Mm -hmm. We wait two seconds and we keep in a loop doing that. So if I hook up to that stream, I get live updates as they go. Yeah. Um, and so this is kind of how you uh, build the service. You write the proto file, you right click, add the service reference, tell it to build the service. It will go build this weather base for you. You override the two methods and you're done. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, and then if we go look again, let's go back into our startup. And what you're going to find down here is in my endpoint routing, I basically say, hook up my weather service. And so that's, that's what makes easy. It, that's what makes it available to be called on, uh, you know, by the, by the application. I think something else we should point out here, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you think of dot, about ASP.NET, you've always thought of the M and the V and the C. Yep. Um, we now let you skip the M and the V and the C. So um, in this case, notice I have an endpoint here. And all I want to do is call that proto, I want to get that proto file mm -hmm. out. Um, so if your URL is WAC proto, um, all you've got to do is, you know, we say when, when, when that URL is hit, do this. Mm -hmm. And we basically send that proto file out. And we do that because we want to help people generate clients. So let's, uh, let's go take a look at this. My service is running here. Uh, let's go build a client. So I'm going to boot up a new VS. I think after this, we show the, show the Xamarin stuff. The Xamarin, that was pretty cool. Um, and I'll create a new project, and I will create a console. Next. Okay. And this is just your typical boring console application, but I want to show how easy it is to call that mm -hmm. gRPC service we just built. Um, you know, it's part of our job is with Visual Studio and, and the tooling is to make building apps as easy as possible. So I'm going to right-click on my project. I'm going to click add service reference. And now what I can do is I can say, I want to call into a gRPC service. So I'm going to give it a URL, HTTPS local host colon 5001 slash proto. Because that's what that endpoint mapping yep. said was, here's how to find that. And you'll notice here, I could say generate a client, a server, a client, a server. I mm -hmm. mean, we let you do all these things. In my case, we want to call that existing service. So I'll click that. This is pretty cool. It's going to go out and put the NuGet packages in, uh, required to call gRPC, gRPC. It's also going to generate uh, the client code for me as well. So I don't have to write that, that, that goop. Um, so here we go. You can see it's all hooked up. And all I've got to do um, is come over here uh, the critical thing to think about here is I'm going to open that proto file because the thing you need to know is the namespace, weather. Yep. Um, that's how you're going to find what we generated for you, and I'll show that. So we're going to come here, and first thing we'll do is we're going to go create a channel. 
And all the channel is, is uh, you have to have some way of getting a URI uh, to your to your service. Yep. And so this, I'm going to come here and basically just say, hey, this is just HTTPS local host colon 5001. So there we go. There's my connection. And the next thing I do is I want to create the client. And now, remember that, that namespace, weather. And uh, we'll have a couple weathers here. And now I need to give it the channel so it, know, it knows how to call it. So I'll pass the channel in here. There we go. And now I just need to call it. And so once I've got my client, it's as simple as doing client dot get weather. It's that easy. It's that easy. And I'll, I'll let's just finish this out. Google dot protobuf dot well known types dot empty. I want to actually new one of these up. So in gRPC, every method requires you to pass some, some form of parameter, mm -hmm. uh, even if it's an empty parameter. And so we can say here, var temp. And I can just come here, grab the temperature. There you go. And then we can change, uh, let's put an equals here. And then all I've got to do down here is change my hello world to write out temp. Run this. This is going to call that that uh, that service, retrieve the temperature, show it on the screen. That's simple. That easy. It's <laughs> And one more cool feature you guys have been working on is the development debug experience for Xamarin. Yeah, so the, the hardest part about building mobile apps to me has always been getting all the tools and all the stuff you know, on the devices to make the devices happy. Yeah. You have to install you know, developer mode on your device, you might have to get some certs, uh, or you run an buy emulator, a buy a Mac. Um, and so we, we, one of the things we want to do is we want to make building mobile apps with .NET just super, super simple. So I've, I've got a, uh, an iPhone here, and I've got it screen mirrored um, to the uh, PC. There's no Mac here at all. I've got my IO, uh, iOS weather app. It calls that weather service we just built. And I'm just going to press F5 uh, to launch that. And so what's cool here is uh, my iPhone is plugged into my PC. I don't have any uh, developer tools installed on my iPhone. I just took my iPhone and plugged it in the port. Um, the first time you do this, it takes about 15 uh, to 20 seconds to get mm -hmm. going. But once it gets up the first time, once you have the app uh, on the device, uh, it's pretty quick afterwards. So you can see it uh, doing some stuff in the background there, uploading the application to my phone. Give it a second there. There we go. I see stuff happening. There, the app comes up. It's running right on your phone. For running right on my studio. phone uh, that we have mirrored to the screen. Um, and it's going to call out to that, that same microservice that we have you know, running in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, what's cool about this as well is we, we, don't, we don't stop there. Once the app's running on the phone, you know, we want to make development as fast as possible. So I should be able to come over here and let's change Seattle to Sydney. And I'm going to press save in Visual Studio. Wow, that's pretty cool. And look how fast that reaction was. It was like three or four seconds. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing on your phone. There's nothing that. on my phone. So basically what you do is, um, even though I have an iPhone, mm -hmm. I don't have a Mac here, yep. I can develop on the Windows mm -hmm. PC. Um, I get this hot reload, hot restart feature, whereas as I change markup or I change code in VS, the uh, app on the device updates uh, pretty much instantaneously. Now you still have to have you know, uh, a Mac to publish to the to iOS yep. store, but our goal is to make development super, super fast. And so I think some folks that maybe have tried mobile development before mm -hmm. are gonna find, hey, it's really easy now. Yeah. But that's not out yet? This is uh, in private preview today. Mm -hmm. So if you Google um, Xamarin Hot Restart or Xamarin Hot Reload, you'll likely find a page there where you can sign up mm -hmm. uh, to get an early access private preview of this tech. Here's links to all of the things. If, if you want to try you know, the mobile app, you want to try the, the background service, um, there's a bunch of stuff we didn't talk mm -hmm. about, the REPL, 
Uh, we talked about endpoint routing a little bit, health checks. Grab any of these links, mm -hmm. all the codes available, try it now. Great, thanks for showing us everything um, that's been released in ASP.NET Core 3.0. I mean, it's exciting times. And if you guys haven't got it yet, I think um, you should make sure you get it soon and start playing with the new tools. Thanks for your time, Scott. Thank you.